All right, we're live. All right, guys, welcome to the show. We'll be starting shortly, the live stream. And for those who want to ask questions, which is what an AMA is about, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and use the code 6191.25. Once again, 6191.25, M-E-N-T-I.com, to have your questions and voices heard. All right, so we'll be taking questions as they come in based on those that get the most votes from the community. And we'll leave uh, the window open to vote or, or put in your questions for five minutes. All right, so you guys have five minutes to submit your questions. All right, so while that is loading, let me just check the comments to see who is first. Is it going to be Barry again? I have a feeling it may be Barry. <laughs> so just give me a minute here. And no, it was not Barry. So shout out to Crypto Philosopher. You are first on the live stream. Bravo to you. You're the first in the, in the pre-sale. <laughs> uh, shout out to Gail Findlay, uh, Hugh Yuzang, uh, Izechiku, okay. Uh, Fahad, Laurent, Atanas, Kirk, Baggio, Kiwi, Zohar, Duck, Axtain, Ladislav, Silesius, Mr. Jadeja. Yes, Phantasma is doing pretty well. Uh, Nick, BR, hey, what's up, Nick? All the way from Sydney. Masab, Kobe, Adam, Eden, JP, Samora, Bill Say, Jason, IX, Sise, Adrian. All right, all right. Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome to the show. This is going to be a good AMA. All right, as you guys know, this is a project I was very, I'm very, very, uh, excited about. So it's a pleasure to finally have them on here on the channel and for us as a community to be able to ask them any questions. All right, so for those who are just joining, if you have any questions you'd like to submit, uh, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and use the code 6191.25, and we'll take your questions from there. All right, I want to give a quick shout out to people who came to my Crypto World Tour event here in Prague. Also, Crypto Family here. I mean, you guys are amazing. I love... Uh, all the kinds of uh, unique gifts you guys gave me. Somebody they gave me this gift here. Not sure if you guys can see this. Let me make sure you guys can see this. <laughs> For anybody there who's a fan of The Godfather, somebody gave me this. <laughs> so hey, thank you guys. I appreciate all the love and support and looking forward to meeting everybody. Uh, the next stop is Bucharest, Romania. We'll be there on Tuesday and that's gonna be a really big uh, crypto world tour so stop. Right now we have over 400 people that have signed up for the event. This could be as big as Amsterdam and London, maybe even over 600. The venue we, we got can hold up to 1,000 people. It's actually a club, right? So it's gonna be a pretty epic event. So looking forward to meeting everybody there. All right, so with that being said, I think let's start the show. So welcome, James. Tell us about yep. yourself and tell us what Loom Network is. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm James. I'm the co-founder and CMO of Loom Network. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a bit of an echo here. Uh, throw me off. Okay, let me. From my end, my. I think so. Oh, sounds good now. Okay, yeah. So basically, um, we started Loom Network last year. Um, my co-founders Matt and Luke had both been working um, on Ethereum, building different applications, and they had run into the same scaling issues a lot of people were running into, namely. Um, it's too expensive to run a lot of DA. You can't have free uh, transactions. You can't do things like user trials. Um, and then having a 15 second block time just doesn't provide a good user interface for a lot of user facing applications. So we started with the intention to um, create a scaling solution for Ethereum. And then as we went on, we created a code school, Crypto Zombies, which taught. Um, people to build their first dApps on Ethereum in the form of a game. And we got a ton of really good feedback from that. And then suddenly all these game developers started reaching out to us. Um, and we realized that actually online gaming is what we think going to be one of the next biggest like, applications of blockchain technology. 
So we kind of narrowed our focus to games and social now, apps. Question. So why gaming? Yeah. Why that's going to be a big space. I mean, because right now, I mean, gaming hasn't really taken off per se. The only example has been CryptoKitties. Right, and a lot of that is because of the issues with having like a good UX on the existing blockchain solutions. But we think one of the biggest breakouts of blockchain technology is that you can now actually have real ownership of digital assets. So usually when you play the game, like if anyone played World of Warcraft or Diablo 2 or something like that, you would earn items in the game, but then you don't really own those items. So the company could ban you and then all of, you just lose all the work and progress you put into the game. Some games don't allow you to actually trade the things you earn in the game. So Hearthstone, the card game is an example of that. You keep buying these booster packs from the company. Uh, you spend players spend like hundreds, thousands of dollars on this game, but then they can't resell the cards that they buy in the game. Um, if you put these assets on the blockchain, now no one can take them away from you. You can buy them, sell them, trade them however you want to, even outside of the game engine itself. Uh, so that's one of the huge benefits. And then there's a number of other benefits, like um, because no one actually owns the data on the blockchain, you could have multiple games sharing the same assets so you could have games that share the same user data, the, the same items. Um, if I'm a game developer, I could build a game and just let people import their characters into my game and automatically load the same assets, the same stats, and all of that. Um, that's kind of scratching the surface. But yeah, we think there's a lot of really unique benefits to putting games on the blockchain. OK, so anything else besides games? Are you also going to be focusing on dApps at the moment? Or is that something that's going to come down the line? Yeah, so basically, um, with our SDK, which is our main product, it allows developers to build their own blockchains that are interoperable with Ethereum. Um, and you can run Solidity smart contracts on them. And then we have our own smart contracting language in Go, which is a programming language used by a lot of like really serious developers. It's very highly performant and scalable. Um, and we're going to support JavaScript smart contracts in the future. So. Really, you could use our SDK to build any type of application. Um, in the beginning, our focuses are on games and social apps because we think those are the ones that have the most tangible benefits to developers and users. So social apps, it's the same thing. There's been a lot of scandals recently you know, with Facebook and whatnot because basically when you use that social app, your data gets stored on that company's web server. The company sells your data to advertisers. Um, if you get banned or you want to quit the platform, you can't really take your data with you. Whereas if you put this on the blockchain, if you don't like the way that they're running the social app, you can actually fork it. Um, you and a group of users could fork uh, if it's run as a blockchain app, and then you can run your own nodes and kind of decide your own governance. So the fact that users can actually move away from the platform like incentivizes the developers to work closely with the users and the incentives are kind of aligned it gives the users a way to vote on how the platform is governed all right interesting uh for those who are just joining this is an ama with loom network uh and one thing i want to tell you guys this project uh had no ico it's already on exchanges at the moment so it's already trading so this is a post token sale uh ama right uh i was part of the token sale the private token sale uh, this is a project I'm very, very, me personally bullish on. But as usual, guys, this is not financial advice, not a, not, not a financial advisor. Always do your own research. Consult a legal and financial advisor before uh, being part of any token sale or any project that's a cryptocurrency. You can't lose all your money. Right? So only invest what you're willing to lose and do your research. All right, with that being said, back to the show. <laughs> okay, so what, what are you guys currently doing in your roadmap? Right. So originally, our focus was on our SDK, which is launching. So we've had the private beta for the past two months. So developers had to apply, and they could get into the beta to use the SDK. Um, we're launching our public beta. Uh, so basically, then any developer will be able to, to build their own blockchains. Um, and that's our main focus right now, along with Plasma Cash. So we're working on a Plasma Cash implementation. Basically, there's a lot of confusion around Plasma because it's, it's a very broad set of ideas. Plasma Cash is um, kind of the core 
what we say is one of the core benefits of Plasma, which means you could store assets on Ethereum. You can store uh, tokens, ERC-20s, ERC-721, which is kind of like, uh, like in-game assets would be stored as ERC-721s. And then you can use them on the side chain. So the developers who use our SDK, they'd be building their own side chains. Their users can transfer the tokens to the side chain, use them on the side chain, trade them, interact with them. But if the side chain does something dishonest, if the validators on the side chain tried to steal people's assets or disappear with them, then they can actually contest it on mainnet and they can withdraw their tokens back to mainnet. So it's a way of using Plasma Cash allows uh, users to use their tokens on a side chain without needing to trust the validators on the side chain. So this one, so Plasma Cash lets people use tokens on the Loom side chain and bring them back to the yeah, Ethereum. exactly. So it's kind of like a cross chain yep. for currencies or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Because if you have, if you take something like EOS, now EOS is a standalone blockchain. So basically, if you have any tokens on EOS, you're trusting the validators on that blockchain. Um, with us using Plasma Cash. Basically, you only need to trust Ethereum mainnet for the safety of your tokens, um, but then you can still use them on a highly more scalable sidechain. Okay. Now, right now, you guys are working with Ethereum, and also Vitalik himself has uh, really taken a liking to the project, which was one of the big surprises very early on, because you guys didn't really have much awareness initially. Right? Now, do you plan to expand and go to other blockchains besides Ethereum, or is Ethereum the main one you're kind of placing your, your, your cards on? Yeah, so we have a really strong developer focus. Um, that's been our focus from the beginning. So we kind of give our developers what they want. And if in the future there's another blockchain platform and tons of developers are building on it and they say, hey, we want to interact with this blockchain, then we can build in support for it. But us personally, we're very bullish on Ethereum. Um, we think Ethereum's already won the race for developer adoption. There's orders of magnitude more developers on Ethereum than any other platform right now. So um, like our school, Crypto Zombies, the Ethereum Code School has over 200,000 users. Um, there's just a massive number of developers who have already learned Solidity. And there's a lot of infrastructure around that. Uh, services like Infura, MetaMask, um, Consensus has been building a lot of projects around Ethereum. It's really hard for another platform, in our opinion, to catch up at this point, just because if there's some other benefit that another platform offers that they say Ethereum can't do, like it's more scalable, well, we say you can just do that on side chains to Ethereum. So using something like Loom, you can build a blockchain that is highly more scalable, but you can still trust the security of the Ethereum mainnet. So us personally, we think we think Ethereum has such a lead right now, it's going to be really hard for another platform to catch up. But that said, if in the future there is some other platform that's 10 times better and all the developers want to interoperate with that, then we can add that functionality. Awesome, awesome. Uh, one thing I will know is, uh, I will, will state is, I've met lots of developers and they all love Loom Network. I have yet to meet a developer oh, really? that does not love Loom. <laughs> so I think you guys are definitely winning that uh, developer race. All right, so well, any last, any last uh, statements before we open up the questions to the audience? Uh, yeah, just jumping back to our, our, you asked about our roadmap. So mm -hmm. recently we announced that we're launching Zombie Chain, um, which basically is, it's a shared side chain to Ethereum. So originally we were thinking, oh, these dApps, if you wanted to build a decentralized Reddit, you would want to run your own side chain because it's, it's extremely scalable. But in talking to developers, we realized a lot of people are, a lot of developers are just using Ethereum and running into scalability problems. Um, but then when, when they were getting onboarded on our SDK, they're like, oh, you know, well, who runs the validators? Do we have to run our own validators? We have to incentivize users to, to run their own validators to grow the network. So we realized a lot of developers just want something that's more scalable than Ethereum that they can just deploy their Ethereum dApps to and, and just use immediately. So Zombie Chain is, is a um, blockchain based on DPoS, the Delegated Proof of Stake. It's the same consensus algorithm as EOS, so it's very highly scalable, allows a lot of throughput. Um, and at the same time, it's uh, compatible with Solidity. So basically, 
That's the programming language for Ethereum smart contracts. So any dApp that someone has built on Ethereum, they could very easily port and deploy to Zombie Chain and just have it running immediately. And we're going to offer that. It's, it's kind of like a shared web hosting for blockchain applications. So they'll pay like a fixed monthly fee based on the transaction volume of the app. Now, how fast can a dApp run on, on a side chain? So right now, we're seeing sub-second block times. And what that means is um, if you send a transaction to the blockchain, it will be written. It, it'll be written to the blockchain in under a second. Um, so this, this allows for some really interactive depths, like games. So for example, when you're playing one of our games, um, we have like a 2D side scroller, for example. When you collect coins in that, it's written to the DAP chain. And you, you don't even notice the latency because um, it, it's fast enough for interactive gaming, basically. OK, interesting. Now, any idea on the TPS compared to other blockchains? Yeah, so this is a question that we think is really funny because um, it depends on so many factors. And it's not really an accurate measurement. So if you run a blockchain with three validators and you put them all on the beefiest AWS centers uh, servers in the same data center, you're going to get a really high TPS number. But it's not decentralized. Um, there's a trade-off between throughput and decentralization. And basically, the higher the TPS is, the lower the level of decentralization is going to be. Um, so it's really variable. And with our SDK, you can choose your own parameters. So you, a developer could say, my app does not really need to be highly decentralized, but it needs to have an extremely high throughput. And he could configure that by having a lower number of validators. This is what EOS does. Or he could say, I want, I want a balance between decentralization and throughput. And I'm going to increase the number of validators, which means it's more decentralized. It's harder for someone to exploit it, but it's going to reduce the transactions per second. Right, so it, we it, don't think it's a really yeah. accurate measurement of anything in itself. It's kind of like um, in the 90s when computer companies were like comparing the number of megahertz on their CPUs. And like higher megahertz is better, but then that wasn't the full picture. And there's like a lot of other factors you need to look at. Right, that makes sense. OK, <clears throat> so let's open up the questions to the audience. First question people have is, how does Loom compare to POA network? POA network has live bridges and real partnerships with the US government entities. OK, so um, correct me if I say anything wrong, uh, but my understanding of POA network is that they're a single side chain to Ethereum that's basically running the EVM on a proof of authority, which is yeah. like it, yeah, I think right. um, so, with Ethereum with a different consensus model is pretty much OK. It. Yeah, so what I would say, there's a number of differences. So for one, with the Loom SDK, developers can choose their consensus algorithm. Basically, our SDK can generate a bunch of different networks, like POA network. Um, so a developer could basically generate their own POA network. Um, our, we don't, we're not built on the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, so you, on the EVM, you, know, you can only deploy Solidity applications. Um, our SDK has its own smart contract language in Go, which is going for game developers, for example. They're all using Unity, which is a game development plugin. You're not going to really integrate that with Solidity smart contracts um, okay, for something so like Chimed in here saying POA network has clone networks that can be spun up on demand. OK, yeah, as I said, I'm not, I'm not intimately familiar with their project. Um, but yeah, so I would say we're not a clone of the EVM. We're not like a fork of Ethereum. We're basically an SDK for generating a bunch of different customized blockchains that can be customized based on a number of different parameters. Um, Another way, I mean, our focus is specifically on online games and social apps right now. We're um, decentralized with it. Um, we're interested in a decentralized World of Warcraft. Um, and if you go to delegatecall.com, uh, that's D E L E G A T E C A L L.com, 
that's our first uh, DAP chain running in production. It's a question and answer site. It's uh, like a hybrid of Stack Overflow and Steemit. If you use that site, it just feels like a normal Web 2.0 website, but it's running on its own blockchain. Um, you won't even notice if you're just using the site. So we're interested in kind of these fully immersive applications, like a social site, like a Reddit, um, or like a fully immersive mobile game. And the blockchain is just kind of running in the background. And right now, it's hard to build these kind of games on Ethereum alone. OK, now, how, what's the process of porting a game? Let's say, actually, let's say I'm, I'm building a spread, my spreadsheet into an application. And right? how do I port that to the Loom network as a side change so that it can scale and the whole world can view the spreadsheet without crashing the Ethereum network? If you want to put a spreadsheet into its own DAP, um, no, I mean, like right yeah, now, let me see. Right, I mean, it's a spreadsheet, but let's say it turns into a DAP, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you have to use a token to access the DAP, right? So what's the process of putting that on, on your network or side chains? Yeah, so I mean, basically, you would have to hire a developer to code this into a DAP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, assuming that's been done, assuming that's been done. Like, so if it's been done in Solidity, which is the Ethereum, coding language, once we launch Zombie Chain, you could just deploy that to Zombie Chain. And you would use the Loom token to stake in a smart contract. And then based on the monthly usage, it would just deduct a per month fee based on how much usage that application was running. So once we launch Zombie Chain, it's going to be as easy to deploy to that as it is a normal Ethereum dApp. If you, it was a really high volume dApp, then you might want to put that on its own DAP chain using our SDK, um, which basically our, our developer docs are quite straightforward. We just had a hackathon this weekend for gamers, for, for Unity developers, and so game developers. And within nine hours, everyone had a working DAP that was running on their own DAP chain. So for developers, the SDK itself is, is very straightforward to get quickly up and running with. OK, uh, next question. Are you actually transferring assets to the Loom sidechain, or is it a centralized database that is keeping track of assets on Ethereum? Yeah, so there's no centralized database anywhere. Um, you can transfer assets from Ethereum to the DAP chain, and you can transfer assets from the DAP chain to Ethereum. It's kind of like a two-way bridge. You can also have assets on Ethereum that you're just reading from the DAP chain, but not actually accessing. So it's kind of up to the developer on how they implement it. But yeah, using Plasma Cash, basically you would be transferring tokens to the DAP chain. You can use them on the DAP chain, and you can withdraw them back to Ethereum whenever you want to. All right. Uh, next question. Why was your question about the spreadsheet deleted? Uh, so this is a AMA on Loom Network, guys. We can handle the spreadsheet questions. I've answered that question on numerous other AMAs with me. So let's keep the questions here in, in uh, regards to Loom Network. My spreadsheet right now is not available, but uh, watch the other videos for the answer. OK, uh, next question is, uh, am I holding Loom? Yes, I, I, I do have Loom tokens. Uh, they were put at the hack, but uh, I believe in Loom so much that uh, I, I got some more. And also, s some friends were generous enough to give me some more. Right? So I, I do own Loom tokens, yes. OK, what are the major problems you're facing? Major problems we are facing, and this, is, this applies to the space in general. So one is the user experience on mobile. Um, Right now, it's really hard to use dApps on mobile because to use Ethereum dApps on mobile. Um, but one of uh, our partners, Trust Wallet, they're working on a really slick solution here called deep linking, where basically you could click a link, you, you could click some link in the dApp, and it would open a popover with the Trust Wallet application. And then you can just seamlessly approve the transaction on Ethereum. Um, we have a, a GIF demo of that. GIF, GIF, I forget what the outcome of that debate was. 
but we have that on one of our articles on Trust Wallet. So that's one of the big ones is improving the, the user experience on mobile. And that's part of why we think um, side chains like what we're building with Loom are extremely useful here because with sub second block times um, on Loom side chains, the user does not need to sign every single transaction. So in a game, if you want your movements to be written to the side chain, if you want collecting um, coins to be written to the side chain, you don't want to have MetaMask pop up and have the user have to sign every transaction. So yeah, one of our solutions to that is to not have the user sign every single transaction, only sign the transactions when they're interacting with Ethereum mainnet. And then the second biggest hurdle in this entire industry is developer adoption, is getting enough smart developers building blockchain applications and seeing the future and the potential of building their applications on the blockchain. Um, because right now, as we've seen, you know, CryptoKitties is like one of the biggest breakout applications we've seen so far on the blockchain. Yeah. And we think the potential is so much more. So our focus is on doing these hackathons and you know, training developers hands-on, showing them how to build these apps, writing our content to show them why you should be building blockchain applications. Um, now, and yeah, I think those are two of the biggest hurdles. Now, What's speaking, that? speaking of CryptoKitties, have you guys spoken to the CryptoKitties team? or maybe try to persuade them to bring their DAP over to Loom Network? Um, yeah, we would definitely be open to, to working with the CryptoKitties team if um, lots of people watching this AMA want to reach out to them and say, <laughs> hey, you guys should put your DAP on Loom Network. <laughs> now, speaking of that, do you have any partnerships or any other DAPs or developers you would like to announce you're working with that you haven't already? Yeah. So we have a number of um, developers and teams that we've been talking to that, that we're not ready to announce yet. Um, we've announced two of them so far. So one is Pixie Shopping Street. It's a China-based game where um, users, it's mostly like teenage girls, kind of design their own clothes and their own outfits. And then these are represented by tokens, and then they can sell them to other users. And so their first game has like i think it's like two or three million users in china and then this game that they're building on loom is kind of a blockchain version of that and then we've also announced um neon district which is like a cyberpunk rpg um that's based on the blockchain where all of the assets that you collect all the weapons and items are stored on the blockchain and then we have one um that we're going to announce this week uh, which is Axie Infinity. There, it's it's a Crypto Kitties type game where you collect, you know, these cute characters, and I think you can breed them. And in this one, you can battle them against each other. Um, the other ones we're not ready to announce yet, but we have been talking to some very prominent DApps that most people would have heard of. Um, and yeah, we'll announce we'll announce those when we're ready. Now, is the platform already open to any de any developer to build a DAP, or is there some kind of application or vetting process? Yeah, right now developers have to apply to our private beta, um, and at this point, um, when someone applies, we're, we're getting them onboarded pretty quickly. And then next month, uh, with our public beta release, then anyone will be able to just you know come to our website and start and download the SDK and start developing on it. That's after the public beta. And what date is that, or what time frame? Uh, we haven't announced a specific date, but it's it's in June. In June, OK. Oh, wow, so next month. Next month, yeah, exactly. the floodgates open up, basically. Yep, exactly. All right, OK. Uh, somebody mentioned something about security. Uh, what happens when somebody's funds are stolen on a, on a dApp chain? How do they go back to Ethereum? Like, is there some kind of process you have for that? Yeah, so this is what Plasma Cash handles. And um, we're still working on the exact UX to make that. This is another one of the difficulties, is making the user interface good for handling things like Plasma Cash. But basically, they would when you make to transfer assets to dap chain there's a smart contract on mainnet the tokens are transferred to the dap chain's wallet on that smart contract and then the dap chain can access them and then 
user would be able to submit a, um, like they'd be able to contest on the smart contract that the DAP chain like is, you know, they want their funds back basically. And then the smart contract, um, it's, it's technically complicated. There's like a, a way for them to prove and the DAP thing and you know, has to prove that basically they were doing things legitimately. Um, so it's a smart contract on the hands with the funds gives users a way to have to cross the chain. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Somebody's asking what programming languages are capable or are co compatible with uh, Loom Network? Yeah. So right now you write your smart contracts in Go um, or Solidity, which is the Ethereum programming language. And in the near future, we're going to add JavaScript smart contracts. And it's a pluggable portion of the SDK. So basically, any developers could come and say they wanted Python smart contract support. Um, a third party developer could build that and support a plugin for Python smart contracts um, or using like WebAssembly or something like that. So it, it's extensible, but right now it's Go and Solidity. OK, all right, nice. Next question. Why do you need a Loom token? And what's the incentive for holding this token? Yeah, so the token is it's a membership token, basically. So we have multiple membership tiers. And it's represented by the balance of Loom tokens in your wallet. Um, so for right now, as a user, if you're using a dApp chain dApp, you can use it for free. But if you want to transfer your assets between mainnet or between another dApp chain, you have to have a balance of one Loom token, which is like your membership pass. Uh, developers need to have a higher balance of Loom tokens in order to use the SDK to make their own dApp chains. And for Zombie Chain, um, we've announced that basically you, developers who want to deploy a dApp need to stake tokens. Loom tokens, and then it's going to be deducted each month based on the usage of that DAP. Um, so really, it's it's a membership token that we're using for all of the services that we deploy on our platform. Um, any new services we offer in the future are going. That's what the, the Loom tokens are going to be used for those as well. Um, and then, yeah, there, there's some other other uses of the token that we haven't announced yet but we will be doing so over the next couple of weeks. Early, OK. All right, for those who are just joining, this is an AMA with the Loom Network team, uh, James Duffy. If you have any questions you'd like to submit, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 619125. That's 619125 to have your voice heard. OK, so somebody had a question regarding Engine. I think it was also a gaming project. Uh, have you heard about it? And how do you guys compare to that and other gaming platforms, like I think Mobile Go and some others? Yeah, I've heard of Engine. Um, I don't think the two projects are very similar, aside from the fact that we're both focusing on gaming. Um, again, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that Engine, Engine coins are, are basically kind of a, a universal it, it's meant to be a universal currency between game items or something like that. So I think the developers would use Engine Coin to mint items in their game, and then those items could be decomposed into Engine Coins. Um, I, I don't believe they're building like a blockchain SDK. So I, I think although both projects have to do with gaming, I don't think that there's a whole lot of overlap between them. OK. Now. So trying to get dApps to kind of go mainstream is a pretty tough task. What's your marketing strategy? How do you plan to really not only get developers on board, but get the actual users that will be using the dApps developers use on board? Yeah, so, so that's, the, that's the hardest part, right? And um, so our focus is, first, you need to get the developers building the apps that users want to use. Of course, our end goal is to bring this to the mainstream. We want to build hugely popular dApps that, that are running on Loom Network that are used by you know, hundreds of thousands of users. Um, in order to get that point, we need to get the developers to start building these applications. So we've started by building them in-house to basically show developers what's possible 
we built our first one delegate call, which is the question and answer site. It's it's like a you know a Steam it like site for question and answers. Um, basically, whereas a project like Steam it has you know a massive developer team that's been working on it for years. With our SDK, you could build a Steam it like a single developer could build a Steam it like um, DAP. Uh, you know, in probably a couple of weeks instead of needing a huge team and millions of dollars of funding. And so we want to make it as easy as possible for developers to build these things. And then we're, we're also showing um, examples with games. So we have an in-house games team that's been, we have three games in development right now um, that are going to be released over the next few months here. Um, and yeah, we have a, we have some pretty exciting announcements for what we're doing to you know, bring these games to the masses. Um, that will be coming probably in the next week here. Um, and basically, yeah, we don't want to just target blockchain and crypto enthusiasts. We want to target mainstream gamers and mainstream game developers. And that's why you know, we built a Unity plugin. This is what the majority of the mobile game industry uses to build their games. Uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to build one of their games and put it on on a dap chain and then you have users who might download the game not even knowing it's on a blockchain it feels like a completely seamless mobile game but then they actually own their assets and then they can trade them um so it's kind of a way to bring a completely new audience into into the blockchain now have you thought about maybe replicating past successful games like maybe Flappy, Flappy Bird, that was a hit on iPhone, or maybe even a Kim Kardashian type game, <laughs> that would bring the masses on board like that. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, about, for sure. You know. <laughs> right. So, so there needs to be some okay. level of benefit of putting this on the blockchain. And we think so, so tradable assets, we think are one of the best ways to do that. So one of our first games, it's, um, it's a hearthstone like trading card game. So you, you can earn packs by playing the game, or you can buy packs of cards, you battle against other players, the bigger your deck is, you know, the more cards you have, the better of a deck you can build. Um, and then you can actually trade your cards and sell them and buy them on a on a massive marketplace. And you truly own these things. So you own them outside of the game. No one can take them away from you. Um, and yeah, we think games that have some level of tradability and, and buying and selling, you know, because it really takes advantage of that marketplace. And um, a lot of what has made crypto really popular, we think. OK, now I just got an idea right now. It may not be the best idea, but what about like fantasy sports? I mean, they just legalized gambling in the US. Right, recently, and fantasy sports has a lot of money. What if people were able to do that using crypto and tokens, and it was on a DAP? Because I mean, you, you, you do trade players back and forth. That's just an idea. An idea. I'm not sure if anybody's doing that, but that kind of came to mind when you're talking about about that. So I'll I'll just say that's a great idea, and I'll just call out to everyone watching this. Um, if you have any level of skill as a developer, or if you want to get into development, build what Ian just <laughs> described. And there, this is a, it's a huge, just open field. There's tons of opportunity. We think um, blockchain-based games are going to be like the, like the App Store rush, where you had this App Store, tons of people with iPhones, and not a lot of games available. So the first ones to get on there and build games, they, you know, they made a lot of money. There were tons of users playing it. So um, we think that blockchain based games are going to be one of the next areas to explode and the developers who get in there early and have good ideas like that. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a wide open area. I mean, you could say this could be the next gold rush because I recall when Apple launched their Apple App Store, some developers quit their jobs. Well, maybe, maybe not quite that much, but from development teams or just hire development teams to just make Apple apps, I'm just putting out as many apps as possible because in a way they had first mover advantage because it was a very young space. And now, I mean, now exactly. the app is very saturated, but in a way blockchain games, I kind of see that as kind of being the next frontier in a way, right? So I may just possibly just hire a bunch of developers to just make games, who knows? But uh, anyway, 
Um, yeah, well, that's exactly what we're saying. Um, from our perspective, you know, we can't we can't scale massively horizontally by making all the games ourselves. We want to, you know, train and incentivize and get other developers really excited about this. And and you know, um, our main model is we're we're a developer SDK. You know, we're a way we're trying to make it as easy as possible for developers to build these apps. Um, so yeah, from our perspective, we, we want to throw all these awesome ideas out there and get other people to build these games. All right, next question. Actually, guys, we can't really answer or talk about questions regarding price and the project. Uh, we're going to try to keep as much speculation out of here. Uh, with that being said, I mean, me personally, at non-financial advice, this is a project I believe in a lot. Right, this is a long term project because it is an infrastructure project that's trying to help Ethereum really go mainstream and scale with dApps and such and games, right? And that kind of should tell you how I feel about the project without trying to predict any price. Now, next question is what does the integration with Cocos mean? Yeah, so Cocos is a um would you call it a platform? It's basically a toolkit for game developers to build their own games, uh, similar to Unity. And basically, they their developers are working to build an integration with Loom DAP chains. So any developer who's using their like game kit could, you know, make it DAP chain enabled, so it would run on Loom network. Okay, interesting, interesting. All right, uh, next question is kind of interesting. Not sure. I'm reading this correctly. Most of the items in a game are obtained from loot box and making them tradable makes it gambling plus stock market. Um, that means no Steam, no Walmart. Germany recently announced jail time for this. Okay, I'm not sure what exactly the question is saying, but I guess is this considered gambling, trading tokens or assets? Yeah, and this is. Is there, is there a regulation around this? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. And I think there are a lot of uh, regulations around this, and it's a fine line. And it depends on the individual country. Like they said, I think specific countries have just outright banned loot boxes. I think Japan is another one of those, where if you have this loot box, it, it makes it gambling. Um, what is that loot box, so for those who don't know? Loot box is like you pay it $2, and you get this thing that's going to have a random item in it or like you buy a pack of cards and it gives you five random cards but you don't know what you're going to get kind of thing so i think some countries have said that that's wow. i think some countries have said that's gambling um so yeah it's going to depend the developers are going to have to pay attention to their individual countries regulations and then obviously platforms like steam or apple have their own regulations developers will have to comply with um but yeah from our perspective um, you're, when you build a game on a DAP chain, you're basically just using the DAP chain as your database. So instead of being on a company's web server, it's now on a decentralized network. And that itself, there's nothing like, you know, wrong or illegal about that. And then it's going to be interesting to see how these regulations develop once any digital item can be traded or bought or sold. Um, the regulations are going to have to kind of evolve with this. But um, yeah, so that's it, that's kind of a complex topic, but that's an interesting question. All right, next question. Has the Loom team thought about tapping into the Australian market? Um, yeah, we're open to tapping into any market. So we're hosting hackathons. Uh, we just had our first hackathon in Japan with Unity game developers here in Tokyo. Um, and we have hackathons in Beijing and Shanghai next month. Um, probably half a dozen people have reached out to us so far, maybe more about organizing hackathons in their own city. So um, this is our main focus right now, is hosting these hackathons to get developers on board using the Loom SDK. So if anyone wants to organize a hackathon in their city, feel free to email us, and, and we'd be happy to coordinate on that. Um, and I'm not sure what other capacity the uh, person I mean, asking uh, the question had mine, but... Definitely recommend if you if you're gonna do a hackathon, do one in Sydney, Australia. Very huge crypto community there, blockchain community, and also London, England. I mean, those two places have been ridiculous, and also Amsterdam, and and Bucharest. Okay, awesome. 
Just, just kind of right, I'm gonna... from our, our world tour travels, those places have been the they've had the most attendance. All right. So awesome. kind of, I think there's a huge community there. Yeah, I think um, we're doing one in London. We're kind of planning one in Lung London because my co-founder Matt is speaking at a Go developer conference there. Um, I don't remember the exact date on that, but we're probably going to organize a London hackathon around that. All right. All right, guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, I think we've gone through, through most, most of the questions. Let me just see if there are any other questions left. Okay, somebody's saying, could games on Xbox and PlayStation get involved, or will it be mo mobile games mostly? Um, I, I don't know enough about Xbox and PlayStation and how they work to know like the, the specifics of that question. But basically, um, you can swap out a centralized server with a dApp chain. So any game that um, can be built on Unity or Cocos or these other platforms or even you know a custom game development, if they can use the dApp chain like they would a web server for reading and writing the data, then it could work on any platform. That said, I don't know the specifics of, of how Xbox games work to answer that. All right, uh, next question. Why not have all this on one platform and make it easy like EOS, EOS has? Yeah, so I think one of the benefits that sidechains offer is the ability to experiment and be flexible. So if an individual dApp, it might have very different needs from another dApp, right? Maybe a Reddit, maybe a decentralized Reddit has like very different needs in terms of um, who can run the validators of that network. For a social network, it probably makes sense that people in the community who have built up a certain amount of karma, maybe they get the rights to run a validator, or maybe it's through DPOS, they can vote on their, their validators by staking you know, the karma credits in that community. And maybe this community has very different needs from what's happening on a game, for example. So first of all, our SDK lets anyone build their own blockchain in you know, a matter of days instead of you know, months or years. So they can, it, it's, it enables experimentation. And then we're starting to offer these shared chains. Zombie chain is the first one, which is just going to be a general purpose Ethereum side chain for any Ethereum dApp. Uh, but we're already talking about in the future you know, we could offer like a games chain, a social network chain, for example, and you can kind of have shared chains that have a common set of parameters. And we think this is the way to, to scale blockchains is through expanding horizontally, but having that decentralized base layer, that layer one, which is Ethereum, and now you can do a lot of things on layer two. Oh, wow. Awesome, awesome. So let me see if you have any other questions before we end uh, the live stream. So somebody's saying Fortnite on Loom would be amazing. <laughs> I'll have to look up Fortnite. I'm I'm not familiar with that. Oh, I'm guessing it's a game. You don't know Fortnite? Oh man. That's only like the hottest game on on PS4 right now. It's like this oh, okay. it's this massively online multiplayer game. I myself have never have never played the game, but I know my younger brother and sister and everybody who's in like college and high school plays this game 24 seven. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a hardcore gamer, like growing up, all of us are co-founders, but like these days, you know, we're so busy that I don't have time to dive into these new games. I gotta, that is a good, I do that, that is a great thing. spend all my all the day playing a game. And then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> not making progress on Loom. So yeah, yeah. I had to, have to, don't have time for gaming these days. All right, all right, uh, well, Let's end with one last question. So what do you see yourself one year from now in terms of the project Loom? Yeah, one year from now. So that's like an eternity in blockchain time. We always joke here about blockchain time. And it's like, like really, that was one month ago? Seems like time moves so quickly here. So one year is an eternity. But I really think by that point, we'll have seen some like massively mainstream games. Um, hopefully, one of the projects that we're building here in house. I think we'll see games running on the blockchain that have tens or hundreds of users. Um, I think 
um, these non-fungible tokens like ownership and digital assets is going to be one of the biggest breakthroughs. And we'll see, you know, these massive marketplaces where people are buying and selling game items. You can, it's kind of like, imagine an eBay for, for items from like a bunch of different games and you're actually buying the true ownership of those items. Um, yeah, I think, I think a year, it, that's a really long time from now. I think we're going to have made like leaps and bounds of progress by then because I mean, we're moving so quickly that, you know, even a couple months is like, like, uh, yeah. it's going to be totally different what we have then from what we have today. But yeah, I really think that like, we'll have seen some games and applications have really hit the mainstream at that point. Um, and we'll be on just kind of the crypto enthusiasts because we're going to make these things accessible to your average person on Facebook. And awesome, awesome. Uh, I'll just add on to that. Uh, I know you probably can't say this, but I can maybe. Loom to the moon. <laughs> that, that's one year from now, but that is not financial advice, guys. Do your own research. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, James, for joining us on this uh, live stream AMA. Uh, lots of great questions. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys, uh, the audience, for being here. And for just, I'm not sure, whatever time zone you guys are in, over here in Prague it is, it was like 9, 10 a.m. or so, so it was pretty early for us to have a user AMA, usually they're later, but hey, as we're traveling this world tour, we have kind of the different time zones. Uh, any other last words you want to say before we end, end the show? Um, no, I mean, I guess I'll just emphasize, I really think that we're on the brink of bringing this blockchain technology to mainstream, and we really think that online games and social applications are gonna be the way there. And thanks a lot, Ian, for having me. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And yeah, feel free to reach out to us directly if you have any questions. And thank you guys. So last few words, as usual, this is just our personal opinions, right? These are definitely do your own research before participating in any cryptocurrency or project out there. Do your homework, consult a legal and financial advisor, make sure whatever jurisdiction you're in, you're abiding by their laws and regulations, especially when if, if uh, it comes to gambling, as some people mentioned in Germany. All right, so definitely do your research in that and consult professionals. Uh, I'm just sharing my personal opinion and looking forward to meeting all you guys at the next Crypto World Tour event in Budapest. Uh, actually, not Budapest. Someone, someone just mentioned, mentioned Budapest, Bucharest. So for those who are curious about our next stops, let me just pull that up right now. Right? So you can go to my, to my site, ianbelina.com, and see our tour schedule. Right? This really is the Crypto World Tour, guys. Right, so up next is on Wednesday, May 30th, Bucharest, Romania. We have over 450 people that have RSVP'd. Up next, June 4th, Budapest, Hungary, over 230 people. And then Paris, France on June the 7th. And then uh, Moscow, Russia. Right, so if you want to join the, uh, these events, go to my site, ianbrina.com. If you want to join my Telegram group, my private Telegram group where I only share my private alerts for free, just go to ianbelina.com slash mastermind. And if you want to learn more about Loom Network, go to loomx.io. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Until next time, guys, we'll see you on the moon. Take care. And thank you, guys. The guy that gave me this T-shirt, thank you. This has been amazing. <laughs> this is going to be the biggest meme ever. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.